Good evening and welcome to First Issues. Nothing is as illustrative of the state of a nation's economy than the performance of its financial institutions. How much of people are able to save, to pay off loans, to purchase property, invest in their businesses, and even open a bank account as a result of finding gainful employment are all reflected in the core performance indicators of a bank. This is why it has become custom here at First Issues to attend the financial results announcement of First National Bank Botswana as we most recently did last Thursday at Avani Hotel here in Khaboroni. Not only are key economic trends unpacked and discussed at these events, but the bank's response to key developments in the economy also holds valuable lessons for all with regards to adaptability and innovation. In the 2013-2014 financial year, water and electricity challenges, a strong 200 basis point bank rate cut and tight liquidity constraints were mitigated by the introduction of the customer-centric strategy, growing the bank's balance sheet and driving up transactional volumes, resulting in a 3% growth in profits before tax. At the presentation of the 2014-2015 end-of-year financial results, First Issues was also present, learning how the then-incoming CEO, Stephen Bohazu, met an environment in which Botswana's economic growth projections were contracted from 4.9% to 2.6%, with a growth in non-interest income, advances, customer base, as well as deposits, but still recorded an 18% decline in profits before tax. We were also there last year when the bank, despite successfully diversifying its sources of income, went from a negative 18% growth in profits before tax up to a minus 13%. SNB also saw a decline in share price from 16 pula to 11. This was a time when poor diamond revenues had markedly reduced government expenditure. But even then, the bank was able to rightly predict that the dark cloud of negative growth figures was finally rising. At this year's end-of-year financial results announcement, it was revealed that one of the biggest challenges facing the bank in the past financial year were record-high impairments at a total growth of 58%. Impairments, of course, being a measure that indicate the level with which customers struggled to repay their loans. Overall, however, FNB CEO Stephen Bohazu says that they are now confident that they are out of the hole, having registered a modest 3% increase in profits before tax year on year, after a tough two years of negative growth. Both he and the Chief Financial Officer of FNBB, Mr. Makaudi Bakwane, will be joining us this evening to tell us how they intend to face the headwinds and tailwinds headed their way as indicated by the current state of the economy. Welcome back to First Issues as we present conversations we had with key members of First National Bank of Botswana's Executive Committee following their end-of-year financial results announcement made last Thursday. First, speaking to the CEO of the bank, Mr. Stephen Bohatsu, who gives us an idea of what kind of environment the bank was operating in. A number of um, factors were at play. Uh, developments around uh, Brexit, developments around what is happening from a policy perspective with America, given the new administration. Uh, developments around China uh, and their impact on demand for commodities as well as the price of commodities have had an impact on uh, the local environment. Um, when you look at the Botswana environment uh, specifically, um, developments around the shutting down of mines, uh, BCL comes to mind, Equestra in Orapa Letlakani uh, is another one, and obviously the impact uh, to the organizations that were dependent on those two organizations for survival. 
um, that characterizes the environment that we are operating in. Uh, because uh, with the shutting down of some of these mines, it actually uh, puts the consumer under a lot of strain um, and it impacts their ability to service their obligations and hence the rise in impairments that we saw uh, during our financial year. How did the bank um, face such challenges? What measures did you put in place to maybe um, cushion the blow of such developments? Particularly given the environment that we're operating in, I mean, so that's a good question. Um, one of the things that we have to understand um, is that the bank and the industry um, actually does well um, when their customers are able to meet their obligations. Uh, and one of the things that we distract from, uh, that we try to move away from, um, is to get involved in any activity that takes us away from our core mandate, uh, which is intermediation and providing services to Batswan. Um, so given the strain that our customers have been going through, uh, we uh, looked at our collections department, our credit department, um, and we put in place mechanisms uh, for engagement with our customers. Uh, just to enable those customers that are able to to schedule their facilities so that we can lessen the burden of the financial stress on their side. So we've been negotiating with most of our customers, uh, looking at uh, various options such as reducing uh, the interest that they are paying, such as elongating the term of their uh, facilities in order to cushion uh, the obligations on, on their part in order to reduce the uh, monthly repayments that we are expecting from them. So those are some of the things that we've been doing, uh, understanding the business, the various businesses that our customers are running in order to give them some sort of leverage uh, to recover from this otherwise difficult environment. So those are some of the things that we've been doing. Um, we've also um, been looking at um, the sort of assistance that we can uh, give to some of our customers, um, particularly those who have got assets and are unable to service those assets. Uh, we've been looking at attempts to match uh, those who are interested in buying those assets um, so that we get them to talk to each other. Um, and. Um, probably reach some compromises without us going through lengthy processes and procedures um, uh, which, which are entailed in the legal route. Uh, so that's what we've been doing. Um, we are open for business. We have said to our customers, it is easier and better when you confront us, when you uh, contact us, when you engage us, when you are starting to experience difficulties so that we can determine how best to assist our customers. Stay tuned. When we return, we continue to see what the learnings from the FNB end-of-year financial results are for both industry and the consumer. To get more from life, we need all the help we can get. Like getting a 105% home loan to cover costs like legal fees and deposits. and 55 days interest-free credit when swiping your credit card. And paying 0% deposit to drive the car you want. And helping save for those big things for your family. And earning real rewards for just doing your everyday banking. Isn't it time you got more from Life with Gold? Switch to FNB today. F and B, how can we help you? Welcome back to First Issues. As tonight we continue to see what the FNB end of year financial results have to tell us about the state of the economy and that of the consumer. To give us some key figures, as well as an informed summary of the bank's performance, CFO Makhaudi Bakwane also joins the conversation. The results uh, for June 2017 really show um, 
a resilient performance, um, f given that we are operating in a uh, in a, an environment with very tough macros, where we've seen clients uh, experiencing um, some serious strain, both the consumer as well as businesses, with the high impairments that have come through in the box. So from the numbers, what's really coming out strongly is, is exactly that, that the impairments um, significantly impacted our numbers as the, the growth of 58%, uh, primarily coming through um, the PCL and the equestrian liquidation. Um, and that um, is about 105 million odd that could have flowed to the bottom line um, had that not uh, occurred. However, we take comfort in that uh, when you're looking at the numbers, the net income from operations show a growth of 8% despite this 58% growth. So to us, that shows that the business is really uh, the core business is showing some, some good growth. And we know that th that is coming on the back of a, a strong margin improvement as the pricing of uh, uh, advances is based on risk. Um, we've also seen the benefit of on the cost of funds through our diverse um, deposit base, where we are actually getting the benefit of the transactional accounts um, from our clients, despite the fact that we are um, improving the tenure of our book in the longer term, where we actually are paying up for deposits. You've mentioned that the consumer is under uh, strain, uh, under pressure. Uh, what do you attribute um, this to, actually? There hasn't really been much um, growth um, in the economy as uh, showed by the um, economic stats with credit extension um, to May at um, 3%, where we've seen that um, household gr credit growth is at 7% while in the prior financial year we're talking as, as high as 13% or so. While businesses, though there's been an improvement um, from a decline of minus one um, last year to about 1% growth in the current year, that, that in itself tells us that there's improvement in business activity, however, still not to the level where we'll see um, you know, a direct impact on the um, economic growth as well as employment creation. So the consumer is under pressure that their real, um, their income is not keeping up with the, with the inflation increases. So that in itself puts them under pressure and the fact that there aren't any uh, real, new real jobs that are being created in the market. So that in itself also puts uh, the, uh, the customers under, under strain. I heard you say that you are confident that you are now out of the hole in which we saw um, negative growth uh, for the bank, which was not numbers or figures you're used to after decades of double-digit growth. Um, what makes you so confident that going forward you are finally on the po positive growth path? When you analyze our results, Namitsu, um, you will appreciate that the, uh, bot the, the top line is actually improving. Uh, the top line, uh, the income has actually improved. Uh, interest income has improved. Interest expenditure has improved. Um, so the fundamentals are already in place. Uh, the only challenge that we had was the challenge around impairments. And we do not believe that we are going to see uh, impairments coming through our books to the same extent as we have uh, over the last uh, two years. Uh, so that situation uh, has obviously improved. Uh, when you look at the bottom uh, part of our income statement, um, the biggest impact has actually been costs. And most of the costs uh, that we incurred during this financial year are ones of costs. They are costs related to investment. Uh, during this financial year, we opened two branches, one in Mokhoditsani, one in uh, Muchudi. We incurred costs around uh, KYC, uh, that's Know Your Customer, uh, where we had to collect documents uh, in response to regulatory requirements. Uh, we incurred costs in um, other uh, spaces uh, where we were investing in technology, where we were investing in self-service channels for our customers. Uh, we incurred costs in order to address um, the process deficiencies that we currently have in the system that, was, that were given rise to service breakdowns. Uh, so there is a lot that we incurred costs on in order to invest on the business. And these are costs that will not be repeated 
uh, in future or in the immediate future. Uh, and given the level of investment uh, that we have put in place, and given the fact that the minerals are now recovering, uh, and we expect government to start spending in the economy, uh, given the fact that the business community is buoyant about uh, the future, given the Bank of Botswana uh, confidence indexes, business confidence indexes, uh, I am very, very optimistic uh, that in future, uh, particularly for this new year that we are going into, 2017, 2018, um, the results will reflect a much better environment that we are moving into. To get more from life, we need all the help we can get. Like getting a 105% home loan to cover costs like legal fees and deposits. And 55 days interest-free credit when swiping your credit card. And paying 0% deposit to drive the car you want. And helping save for those big things for your family. and earning real rewards for just doing your everyday banking. Isn't it time you got more from Life with Gold? Switch to FNB today. FNB, how can we help you? Welcome back to First Issues. Do you not foresee any other challenges with regards to the macro environment or the wider external factors? Um, there's talk of a uh, rate cut by Bank of Botswana, or do you not see any other uh, possible challenges headed your way in the 2017-2018, uh, despite the rosy um, bounce back of uh, the financial sector and industry? Bank of Botswana has managed to maintain the um, interest, sorry, the inflation between 3 and 6%, uh, which is their target. Now, given the fact that we have inflation under control, um, but there are still challenges around growth, uh, there is a possibility that if Bank of Botswana wants to stimulate economic growth, they just might decide to cut interest rates by probably about 25 basis points in the next 12 months. Um, if that happens, um, and should the government revenues improve as well, uh, then we are likely to start seeing businesses uh, borrowing. Now, if you look at um, the credit extend extension in the environment, uh, compared to the last two years, uh, the credit extended to businesses is actually uh, improving slightly. Uh, it was a negative territory about 12 months ago. Although it is not at the level that we were expecting, um, it is uh, for businesses it is now uh, hovering between 1% and 3%, uh, uh, which is an improvement from a negative territory. Now that says to me that the business community is beginning to see uh, growth opportunities. Um, it means the business community will probably start uh, creating employment opportunities. Um, and that can only be great uh, for, for this economy. Uh, challenges, um, it's, it's, a, it's expected um, that the, 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 the mining industry will start recovering. Um, but with the mining industry, unfortunately, it does not always translate into creation of employment uh, because there is, uh, th th there is a lot of machinery that is used in the mining industry and it does not always translate into employment. Uh, so we are likely to continue seeing uh, in the consumer under a lot of uh, stress. Uh, and when the consumer is under a lot of stress, obviously demand is uh, impacted. Uh, should that situation continue, we're going to continue seeing an environment uh, that is uh, slightly depressed. Uh, so that is the uh, possible caution uh, that we should go into the future. So you're anticipating that this issue of impairments may remain a problem even into the next financial year? I believe there could still be some stress, 
but I think not to the same uh, level as currently because um, BCL event is uh, one of those unforeseen um, once-off event we'd like to believe. Um, even though we have seen some stress in the parastatals um, with some uh, um, retrenchments um, uh, in, the, in, in some of the parastatals. So that also shows that from a government perspective there is rationalization. Um, that in itself also um, puts us on a bit uh, on high alert um, with that particular um, space in order for us to actually consider um, if we expect if we should be expecting growth um, in the retail space. But we have seen grow, uh, slow down in that growth in the retail space as we put in uh, more stringent uh, um, credit uh, criteria uh, around around, around uh, our lendings to ensure that we do not expose the customers themselves to any further um, risk. Going back to your earlier mention of the investment the bank has put back into its operations, um, the once-off costs that you spoke of um, from this past financial year, should this high level of investment mean that your customers or potential clients can anticipate a better service offering from FNB? What can they anticipate in the year to come? Um, Namit, so yes, exactly that. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that you would have seen um, as I was doing the presentation uh, is that across our branches, we have invested in a number of initiatives. Um, we have um, opened about four uh, premier suits uh, in order to cater for that segment of the market and improve service in that segment of the market. Uh, we have also opened uh, business suites uh, across some of our branches in order to cater for the business community because we value the time um, that the business community um, um, requires in order to run their businesses and therefore they should spend as little time in the bank as possible. Uh, for some of our customers um, in the gold uh, sub-segment, for instance, uh, we have revamped our contact center so that they do not have to come to the bank. Uh, in the comfort of their homes, in the comfort of their offices, uh, they can actually utilize our services by just using their devices, whether it's iPad, uh, phones, or even the computer in order to access our services. So these are the investments that we are putting in place in order to ensure that our customers spend as little time as possible in the bank. That concludes our program. Find this and other past episodes of First Issues on the YouTube address indicated below. Till next week, it is a good night from me, Namitza Samakula, and the First Issues team.